So this one was really just to illustrate, you know, using a mixed model to examine sources of variation. So this is quite an old study that I was involved in probably about 20 years ago where it was a pilot study to look at, um, they wanted to in the future do some studies for a pharmaceutical company looking at the effect of various treatments on inspiration time in rabbits. And in this pilot study then I think inspiration time was measured from 100 breaths on four different days and because it was thought that you know rabbits might breathe be breathing faster or slower at, in different situations so they were looked at on different days and just four rabbits were studied so the objective was to see how much variability there was in the breaths of individual ra rabbits how much individual rabbits varied between each other and how much they varied from day to day so uh, this is just a summary of the means for each of the rabbits on each of the days and you can see that if you look at the columns and the mean for all the rabbits on the different days, they do vary quite a lot on day two, the average inspiration time, and this is in hundredths of a second, so um, it's just very f fast values. The average for day two is quite a lot higher than the average for day three, so there did seem to be variability. I don't know if these experiments were done at different times of day but uh, or different circumstances on different days but the rabbits do seem to overall vary between the days and then looking at the means overall means for the different rabbits they're quite variable rabbit four seem to have faster inspiration than the other rabbits possibly that rabbit was younger I don't, I don't know anything about the rabbits but presumably all these four rabbits were the types that were going to of the type that would be used in the eventual experiment. And then even from day to day, on a particular day, the rabbits varied, a particular day the rabbits varied a lot, and if you look at one rabbit over different days, their inspiration time, average inspiration time, varied quite a lot, which perhaps seems quite surprising on day two. Rabbit one um, had an inspiration time more than double that it did on day three, so obviously perhaps there were different People are, I don't know, measuring the rabbits on the different days. Something was different across the days. So a mixed model can come in there. Um, we're not actually doing any formal comparisons, but it can help us see how much variability there is from each of these sources. And to do that, we can fit a model, and it fits all these effects as random. We don't have any fixed effects needed in this model. So we can fit rabbit day and the rabbit by day interaction as random effects. And that results in all these amounts of variation. And this term variance component is used when you fit random effect. You describe the variance as a variance component. So we can see that there's variability and this is more than expected by chance between the rabbits, between the days. On a given day, the rabbits are going to vary more than by expected by chance, in fact, by quite a lot and the rabbit's breaths vary within themselves, so the 100 breaths for each fat rabbit um, is quite variable too. And we can use those values, or those values were used to plan future drug trials, and just got a few, uh, don't worry too much about the formulae, but uh, from, from these variance components, you can use them to define formulae for the difference in treatment effects if you were going to have two groups of rabbits and see how different their sort of mean values were. Uh, you can define the overall variance in terms of all those variance components that we looked at. And so we'll first of all assume we're going to do a between rabbit trial where each rabbit is allocated to a different treatment. So they, they only have one treatment each. It's possible to rearrange, use this in a sample size, sort of, we can rearrange the sample size formulae to see what size of difference can be detected for a given power and amounts of variability. But uh, don't worry too much about understanding these formulae. I really just wanted to illustrate that you can use kind of simulation to see how many rabbits per group you're going to need and how many days to achieve a study with a sufficient power to detect a difference of, here I've put 0.15 seconds. Each of these, these studies was sufficient to achieve that difference between the treatments. So we could have a study with just four rabbits 
carried out on eight days. If we were prepared to do eight days, we would only need to use four rabbits. And interestingly, we didn't need the 100 breaths. You only need a few breaths to measure a few breaths in each of the rabbits to achieve the right amount of power. Or the alternative would be to use more rabbits and fewer days, but it was hard to, it seemed to be impossible to get the number of days down to less than three because there is quite a lot of variability in the um, rabbit variation from day to day and we can't avoid that so there's no way we could just do the study on one day and draw satisfactory conclusions. So it gave a range of possible designs for, for a, a future study, probably, I don't know which one they went for, but probably kind of more days and fewer rabbits would be possibly preferable. An alternative design that could be thought about from, from using these variance components is a within rabbit design where it's possible to give the rabbits different treatments at different times and that would make the analysis more sensitive and basically it's possible to do sort of simulations and to see how many rabbits and days would be satisfactory to achieve the objectives. So this was really just to give a feel for the fact you can use variance components for planning studies and seeing what alternative designs would be available to achieve the objectives.